um, welcome back um, part three of um, elements and uh, periodic table in this video we'll continue from where we stopped so far we have managed to cover on the trains uh, atomic radius ionization energy as well as electron affinity we'll continue from there so um, let us start by looking at the success criteria that we are supposed to cover in this lesson of ours so the first one was supposed to describe the patterns in the properties of elements in the periodic table discussing the trends in the periodic table in terms of electron negativity since we have already covered the three atomic radius um, electron affinity as well as the ionization energy the last one that we're going to look in terms of the trends we're going to look at electron negativity the other part that we also uh, we need also to cover is uh, discussing use specific examples the patterns in the physical and chemical properties of elements in group one so let us start the ball by looking at the definition of electron negativity so electron negativity will be slightly uh, a little bit um, different from the other trends that we have looked so far so it's very important to be uh, attentive and make some um, differences among them so what is the electron negativity um, it is the ability of an atom in a bond to attract the shared electrons to itself remember we have molecules we have covered molecules in form one we have ionic as well as molecular uh, uh, compounds or molecules so in molecules we expect that atoms can be gelled together or can be combined together if they are combined together we call it a bond so electronegativity works in a bond so the strength of electronegativity among elements in the periodic table depend on the strength of nuclear charge that is the number of protons inside the nucleus and the number of energy level that is um, atomic radius atoms with many protons in the nucleus have strong nuclear charge hence the bond they, they will attract the shared electrons more to themselves in a bond so this means atom with many energy levels there is high shielding hence there is weak attraction of the shared electrons in a bond therefore they have weak electron negativity remember this one uh, always works in a bond and what type of a bond that we can um, how what where it can work usually it's covalent bond where electrons are shared so trends of uh, electron negativity in the periodic table what happens to electron negativity moving down the group of the periodic table so as we are moving down the group of periodic table the following are happening um, number of protons are increasing but also the number of energy levels are also increasing so if the number of uh, electrons uh, protons are increasing it means nuclear charge is increasing but the number of energy levels are increasing it means there will be high shielding among the inner electrons to the outermost uh, electron this reduces the strength of this nuclear charge therefore moving uh, from top to bottom of the group electron negativity decreases as going down it means it has weak nuclear charge hence they cannot attract strongly to the shared electrons therefore moving from top to bottom electron negativity decreases um, elect uh, electron negativity moving down the group can also be illustrated using uh, group 7 elements if we may check this is fluorine this is chlorine this is uh, bromine this is iodine so we can use uh, to start using the bar graphs uh, if you check here the values you find that here the value is more it means that fluorine is the one which is um, strong can sh can attract the shared electrons more strongly to compare with iodine this has to do with the number of energy levels um, as we are going down indeed the protons are increasing the nuclear charge is increasing but that one is reduced due to increase in the number of energy level as we are going down 
how the electrons are filled in the inner energy level should or reduce the attraction that is supposed to be offered to the incoming um, electron. Therefore, as we are moving from top to bottom, our uh, electron negativity decreases. So what happens to electron uh, negativity moving across the period? If we move across the period, simply means we are moving from left to right. What will happen to the nuclear charge? As we are moving from left to right, the nuclear charge is increasing. It means we expect the atom, uh, atoms of elements from the right hand side of the periodic table to have strong nuclear charge and they should be able to attract the uh, incoming electrons more strongly to compare with the uh, elements uh, in the left hand side. Therefore, we can conclude that um, electron negativity increases as we are moving from left to right of the periodic table. Moving across of the periodic table, number of protons increases. This increases the strength of nuclear charge. Therefore, electronegativity increases moving across the period. This one can be illustrated by um, a periodic table of hours here. This arrow is showing that we are moving from left to right of the periodic table. And we have said that moving from left to right of the periodic table, what happens? Um, the number of protons are increasing as well as electrons are increasing, but the electrons are added in the same energy levels since the, in the same period energy levels are constant. Therefore, moving from left to right, the nuclear charge is increasing in terms of their strength to attract the electrons. So here we expect these um, atoms of the elements to attract the incoming electron more strongly to compare with those ones which are found in the left hand side. And that one is contrary as we are moving from top to bottom. Moving from top to bottom, um, what happens is that the number of protons as well as electrons are increasing indeed, but are also affected by number of energy levels now. This reduces the attraction of the nuclear charge to the outermost um, energy level. Hence, the electronegativity decreases as we are moving uh, from top to bottom. So electronegativity in a covalent bond. Electronegativity occurs more often in a covalent bond because in a covalent bond electrons are shared. The strongest electronegativity in a periodic table are the north members. So what does the north member mean? North represents nitrogen oxygen and fluorine. So we expect these ones to have strong um, electron negativity to compare with other elements in the periodic table. In a covalent bond which involve two elements with a different electron negativity, the, um, the following is going to happen. The one with a strong nuclear charge among us the two will attract the shared electrons more strongly to itself and develop a partial negatively negative charge while the one with weak nuclear charge will attract the shared electrons weakly and develop a partial positive charge why the difference in these partial charges the one which attracts the uh, electrons more strongly to itself it feels as it has gained those electrons that's why it developed a partial negative charge while the one which attracts the electrons weakly, it feels that it has lost the shared electrons and developed a partial positive charge. So, in a bond, uh, electronegativity can be illustrated as follows. Let us look, uh, for example, hydrochloric acid, which is represent short abbreviated as HCl. So, we have hydrogen is combining with chlorine and a bond is going to be formed here. What type of bond is a covalent bond? Why uh, these are nonmetals? For them to be stable, they gain electrons, not to lose electrons. That's why, since they have a uh, similar nuclear charge, they are going to share the electrons. So the shared electrons are attracted by each independent atom. As they attract, they form a bond. Now, what will happen to the shared electrons? So if here, to compare the uh, nuclear charges between hydrogen and chlorine we find that chlorine has strong nuclear charge 
therefore is the one which is going to attract more uh, shared electrons to compare with hydrogen. That's why here you find that hydrogen is partially positively charged while chlorine is partially negatively charged, which tells you that this one is the one which is attracting to the shared uh, attracting shared electrons more strongly to compare with hydrogen. And doing that, charges develop in a covalent bond. In the bond, chlorine has strong nuclear charge than hydrogen, hence it attracts the shared electrons strongly to itself and it develops a partial negative charge. While hydrogen has weak nuclear charge, hence it attracts the shared electrons weakly and develops a partial positive charge. Therefore, electron negativity brings about polarity, pol polarity in covalent bond. Polarity simply means it is bringing charges in a bond. Differences between electron negativity and electron affinity. Electron negativity measures the ability of an atom to attract the shared electrons in a bond while electron affinity measures the ability of an individual atom to attract the incoming electron during chemical reaction. Electron negativity induces the partial charges in a bond, while affinity, um, electron affinity charges an atom to become negatively charged. Why? Uh, since it involves the gaining of an electron. From there, we can have a summary of all trends in the periodic table. And let us look at it um, carefully. We will start with the first one, atomic radius. If we check atomic radius is increasing as we are moving down the group, and we said it's increasing because of increase in number of energy levels uh, due to increase in shielding, and there will be also repulsion amongst the electrons. Therefore, it expands. As we are moving across, what will happen to the atomic radius? It is decreasing. Why is it decreasing? As we are moving across, the nuclear charge is increasing and attraction of uh, valence electrons uh, by the nucleus also increase such that the uh, valence energy level is pulled inward, reducing the um, size of the atomic radius. Ionic radius works in the same way. Um, but let us be specific. Ionic radius, as we are moving down the group, ionic radius, we expect it to um, uh, decrease since we are removing an atom. But as we are going from here, it's gaining of the electron, means the atom now expands. Um, electron affinity now. Electron affinity, as we are moving from top to bottom, electron affinity decreases. So all these three, electron affinity, ionization energy, and electron negativity, have the same uh, concept. Going down the group, they are decreasing due to increasing the size of an atomic radius and increasing in shielding. While moving across, they are all increasing. So this is the summary of all the trends in the periodic table. Now we'll shift our concentration to properties of some of the common groups in the periodic table. Periodic table comprises of eight groups, as we already covered in Form 1, but uh, we have some common groups among, uh, among us, the eight groups that are there. So the four common groups that are found in the periodic table are as follows. We have group 1 elements, which are known as alkali metals, group 2 elements, which are known as alkaline earth metals, uh, group 7 elements, which are known as halogens, and group 8 elements, which are known as noble gases. These are family names of the common groups which are found in the periodic table. So, we can have a periodic table and let us look at where they are found. When we are talking about group 1, it's this one, which is known as alkali metals. Group 2 is besides uh, group 1, which is known as alkaline earth metals. From there, we go to group number 7, which is close to group number 8. Group 7 is known as halogen, while group 8 is known as noble gas. So let us start by looking at individual group. Uh, we are going to start by looking at group, um, group 1 elements. So the group 1 elements, they are known as alkali metals. 
So, coupon elements are known as Akali metals. Why are they called Akali metals? It's because when they react with water, they produce a basic solution or an alkaline solution. That's where the Akali name came from. Akali is an Arabic word which means ashes. So they are placed in the vertical column of the periodic table in the left hand side of the periodic table. The members of uh, group one elements, the members of group one are as well as follows. We have lithium, sodium, and potassium. Now here, uh, we can be puzzled a little bit. Why didn't we include hydrogen? Because hydrogen belongs to group number one. Hydrogen is there in group one simply because it has a single electron in the outermost shell. But hydrogen is not a metal, it is an animetal. That's why it is not included as an example of a Kali metals. So um, the elements in group one, we have lithium, sodium, potassium. These three um, can be found in the first 20 elements. But for the big periodic table, we can still extend. We have labidium, we have cassesium, as well as francium. All these are elements um, from group one, which are known as Akali metals. Physical properties of group one elements. So all Akali metals are gray solids with shiny silver surface when freshly cut. After some time, the shiny fades away. Why do you think the shiny fades away after it has been cut? It's because Akali metals are very reactive and can react with oxygen. If it reacts with oxygen, it changes the um, shiny surface. They gradually lose their shiny appearance as they combine with oxygen gas to form an oxide when they are cut. This, their surface turned dull when exposed to air because they are very reactive. So the concept that you can uh, get from this, Akali uh, metals, all of them, they are gray solids with a shiny surface when they are freshly cut. But if you expose it to air or oxygen for some time, the shyness uh, fades away due to the reaction with oxygen, which turns the appearance into dark. So the shiny is, um, surface is this one. If you can check here in this video, if you have cut it, it will be shiny like this one. This is the shine surface. So the second physical property is that they are very soft and can be easily cut by a knife. So you can see here the diagram is represented uh, showing uh, a knife and the, um, a group one um, element, which is easily being cut by a knife. They are highly reactive. They are highly reactive. Okay, here we need to understand more better on this physical property. They are highly reactive. What makes group one elements to be more uh, highly reactive? And the concept uh, or the reason is that when we look at the reactivity of elements, we try to focus on their ability to gain the electrons as well as to lose the electrons. So metals um, reach electron configuration by losing electrons because they have weak nuclear charge. Hence, metals can be judged if they are reactive based on their ability to release, how quick they release their valence electrons. So if you check on group one elements, um, they have a big atomic radius. It means they can easily release the valence electrons to compare with other elements in the same periods. So the reactivity um, increases going down now. Why? As we are going down from lithium to potassium, we are going to have here num a large number of energy levels. It means the outermost electron 
is weakly attracted, hence can be easily released during chemical reaction. So the reactivity is measured by ease of its atom to lose the single valence electron to reach an electron configuration of all group 8 elements. Because of their high reactivity, it means they cannot be just exposed anyhow. They are supposed to be stored in paraffin as well as oil to avoid uh, the reaction with oxygen. Um, they have low density and float on water. The density increases as we are moving uh, from lithium to potassium, going down the group. Why? Um, due to increase in mass number, this uh, also increases the mass. As we are increasing with the mass, um, and as well as we increase number of electrons in that particular atom, as we are going uh, from top to bottom, the uh, Van der Waals forces are increasing, making the attraction at be more, reducing the volume or the mass is big, hence the density increases. The difference in density in metals is due to different in um, arrangement of atoms in their structures. Number five, they have low melting and boiling points to compare with other metals. They have low melting and boiling points because they form weak metallic bond to compare with other metals. So if they form weak metallic bond, it means they can um, easily melt and as well as can easily boil. Their melting and boiling point decrease uh, moving down the group. What do you expect? The same applies to the nuclear charge. Um, as we are going down the group, the nuclear charge is uh, decreasing. It means that metallic bond they are going to form. The attraction between the delocalized electrons and the fixed metal atom is also going to be reduced. That's why we expect as we are going down the group, um, their melting and boiling point decreases. They are good conductor of heat and electricity. They have free um, mobile electrons. Metals, remember, they are free uh, mobile electrons, which are also known as delocalized electrons, which are able to carry charge from one point to another. That's why they are good conductor of heat and electricity. Number seven, they have the largest atomic radius in the periodic table. Um, if you were to compare the periods, elements in the periods. So the first one, they are going to have more, um, more uh, atomic radius because they have now, if you compare the, in the periods, they have a weak nuclear charge. So the questions now, the bus session, um, explain the major difference between electron affinity and electron negativity, uh, define the term electron negativity, explain why group one elements are called Akali metals, explain why group one elements are most reactive metals, explain why group one elements are good conductor of heat and electricity. State two physical properties of group one elements. Explain why alkali metals must always be stored in oil or paraffin. Uh, for any question, uh, you can um, ask us on WhatsApp. And if we need more information, you can um, uh, go online on zulendo.org. Uh, for references, um, the resources that we have used and the resources that can help you to get more information, you can use Excel and we have used Excel and Succeed Junior Chemistry Book 2, Achievers in Chemistry Book 2, uh, Target Junior Chemistry Book 2, Illustration, Design and Graphics done by Dave Mumba, um, and the photos that we have used here. These are the links that we can find, uh, the photos where we have uh, managed to get them. Um, we can just click the link and get more information about the photos. This marks the end of this uh, presentation. Hopefully we have uh, interacted very well and we have covered the success criteria that was um, eluded in the first slide. This marks the end of uh, the presentation.